guys, today I'm here with a what I eat in a day video from a little bit of a different space for this type of video. I just finished uh, filming a beauty video. My lights were on, my face was on, so I figured I would do this intro. Uh, I've been trying to lose weight for the past seven months, primarily by portion control. So whether you're trying to lose weight or not, you may be able to find something of interest here. I feel like there's something to learn from everybody. I love watching what I eat in a day videos, even if it is just for pure entertainment and what they eat is something I would never eat. So hopefully you'll find something of interest here and at this point this is a little bit behind I'm a little behind on uploading these videos because right now I'm doing more of like an intermittent fasting ish So I have about two or three more of these types of videos and then you'll see something more like the current way that I'm eating But either way, hopefully you'll get something from this But let's go ahead and get started. So this morning We're gonna be reaching peak health and having an acai bowl. I see these in so many what I eat in a days and I was just incredibly curious. I found this pack of acai at Whole Foods and it was $11.99 for four servings. So that's just obscene. But anyways, uh, it comes in a package like this. I have the unsweetened and you run it under a little bit of water. I just cracked mine up to put mine in my blender here. And then in there, I also have some mangoes and half a frozen banana. I don't know what I think about acai really. Um, in a pack you're getting, it's 70 calories and five grams of fat. This one's unsweetened, so zero sugar. And it has uh, three grams of fiber. In my opinion, if I would not continue to buy acai at this price, I would just rather do like a thick smoothie with like blueberries and banana and mango. You can always kind of thicken it up, but to me, I feel like the benefits of acai on this is gonna like immediately make me lose a bunch of weight, which it's not. It's a superfood, it's full of antioxidants, but so are blueberries. And I buy those uh, frozen $10 for two kilograms. So I've done like thick smoothies before and put toppings on it. And that to me is just as enjoyable. I don't feel like the benefits of acai outweigh the price and the benefits of blueberries. It's great and if I could find it for cheaper I probably would because it kind of encourages me to make this kind of smoothie or this kind of breakfast which is quite healthy and full of good things for you but I don't know about that price. Anyway so I'm going to blend this up. Okay so for my toppings I'm going to start with nectarine. I've been loving nectarines lately. They're just super sweet. It's good to put a fruit on top. Basically you're just adding texture and then you also need some like kind of fats and proteins in there to actually make it filling. I found, I had this yesterday for the first time. I didn't find it incredibly filling. So I'm gonna put some of the Special K granola here. This is the French, but it's the uh, low fat granola. And I'm making sure to um, measure this out because granola, albeit this is a low fat version, it's still um, quite dense but you do need something on there that's actually going to fill you up. You could also add protein powder into your blender if you wanted to. I haven't tried that yet. It might make it a little grainy. Then up next, I'm putting in these All Brand Buds. I've talked about these before. They're not that good on their own, but when you add them to a granola, it really bumps up the fiber and it just adds this kind of like crunchy element that's especially good in something like this. Then I'm gonna add some sliced or slivered almonds. I like using these the most because you get, like if I was to use, I'm only using about seven grams of almonds because they're so high in fat that if I was to use a full almond, I would probably only get to use like two, but at least when they're slivered, it kind of goes a little bit further. And then I'm also gonna add on some uh, raw pumpkin seeds. But if you take anything from this video, it's when you're making things like smoothie bowls or anything that you're using like superfoods that you see people using in what I eat in a day is like nuts and seeds and all that kind of stuff. Just be careful because I see people put on like cacao nibs and, and granola and, um, chia seeds, flax seeds, all that kind of stuff, hemp seeds. And those are all very dense in the sense that like a little bit goes a long way. And I only put on like a tiny bit of nuts here and it's, it's enough. But the thing is that if you're trying to like make yourself healthier or lose weight, whatever it may be, if you're just kind of throwing on like hemp seeds into a into a meal and you're trying to cut calories, that's not going to benefit you because you're, they're actually quite high in fat. Although they're healthy, you just need to be careful and use them in moderation. There's nothing wrong with adding anything to your meal, especially, oops, especially like these kind of more dense and really healthy foods, but they can, like I said, be very caloric or be very high in fat. And it's just something to be mindful of that I don't hear people talking about. So this is um, my smoothie bowl, acai bowl. So I'm gonna have cantaloupe as a snack Snack. And I've mentioned this before, but I've been trying to mix up my fruits and vegetables to keep it interesting. And if you can get a good sweet cantaloupe, it's actually so good. I always kind of underestimated cantaloupe, I feel like, because I get it in those like 
cheap little fruits and veg packs that show up at like parties and stuff. But this is actually so good and I cut it all up the day I buy it because if not, it's not gonna happen. And there's not much left here because I actually snacked on it so hard. I was like, just wanted to eat everything yesterday and I had a bit of a rough day so I literally just stuffed myself with cantaloupe. Like I was sitting on the couch watching TV and ate it till I was basically sick, which I don't know, it's, it was a healthier route than eating what I actually wanted to eat. So I'm gonna eat the rest of this cantaloupe. And like I mentioned, it is um, quite an affordable fruit anyways here in Toronto and you get so much product in there. And if you, product, look at this as a makeup review, you get so much cantaloupe in there uh, and it makes a great, great snack. So today for lunch, it's really not glamorous, heavily processed, but it's, uh, exactly what I wanted. I had, I had some stuff meal prep, but I just didn't feel like eating it. So I decided to make like this little kind of grilled sandwichy type thing. So it's on one of these flat out folded, um, breads. I really like the flat out brand for wraps and whatnot. It's 110 calories. Then for my soup, I just have some classic Campbell's tomato. I have about just over a serving of that, I guess. And on my sandwich, I put just plain yellow mustard, which is essentially low calorie uh, or no calorie. Then some of the skim mozzarella shredded cheese. I normally don't buy the shredded because it's not as good of a deal um, and it's not as affordable, but I made nachos last weekend. I went to the convenience store next to my house. So that's why that happened. And then I have salami along with some of this natural selections. What is this, chicken or turkey? Turkey breast. And I think I'm gonna put a little cheese on my, on my soup. Do you ever do that with tomato soup? It's just one of those days, even though it's like the dead of summer. But I want cheesy tomato soup, so I'm gonna have it. I'm still gonna measure it out, like I'm not going completely rogue here. Put a ton of pepper on there and uh, it's gonna be great. Coming to you from my couch, I'm just having a Zevia zero calorie soda. This is in the black cherry. I love anything black cherry um, flavored or scented. This is quite good. I picked it up at Whole Foods the other day when I was out um, just exploring and trying, wanted to try out some new kind of like lower calorie things and Whole Foods has a good selection, but also, um, I think Zevia is pretty readily available. Anyways, I do like this. Like I've said a million times over, I'm not a huge like artificial sweetener person. The brands are doing a much better job of not making it taste like uh, a bunch of chemicals. <laughs> so this definitely has that kind of like overly sweet flavor, but it's nothing too bad. And it doesn't leave that kind of like chemically aftertaste. So uh, I, I like it. This is the only one that I bought, but I would probably rebuy it. There's a few different interesting flavors I'd like to try. Uh, generally, I'll have like a Coke Zero, but I kind of wanted to mix it up. Time for my next meal. And I had something similar in another What I Eat In A Day. It was the salmon filet with pasta, spinach, and cherry tomatoes and Parmesan. So the only thing that's changing here is the pasta option. So normally I was just doing regular pasta, which I have no problem eating regular pasta just in moderation, but I wanted to try this. I came across it at Metro. It's the Zero Oodle Mung Bean Fettuccine. It's organic, gluten-free, vegan, non-GMO. But my interest comes in, um, if for 50 grams, it's 188 calories, which is about the same as regular pasta, a little bit less. 3.5 grams of fat, but 15 grams of fiber, which is insane. Uh, 18 grams of carbs, which is quite low, and then 21 grams of protein, which is also crazy. Um, and then there's a good amount of iron in here, potassium. So I figured I would try it. I'm not totally sure how it's gonna go. I tried another low carb pasta in another What I Eat In A Day, which I will list, to, list down below, and I liked that. But the thing is, with this dish, there's no real sauce. It's just kind of Parmesan cheese, which is really good on regular pasta. It's just super simple, lots of pepper. But I'm not sure how it's gonna go on this mung bean pasta, but um, that's Rue there, my cat. Um, but I will try it. And for the salmon, I'm just going to uh, pan fry it. So uh, I'm gonna cook this now. And I didn't wanna cook this ahead of time because I don't really feel like it'll last that well in the fridge. It only takes two to four minutes to boil. Okay, so here is the finished dish. I decided to skip out on putting the spinach in the pasta because I decided I'm already eating bean pasta, so. I gave myself a pass on spinach, but I have my cherry tomatoes there and salmon. And this, the pasta is actually pretty good. At first it tasted just like plain edamame, because there's edamame in there as well, along with the mung beans. I don't really know what a mung bean is anyways. But um, I added a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a little bit of minced garlic, tons of salt and pepper, and I sprayed it with a little bit of uh, olive oil pan and the Parmesan cheese, and it's actually really good. Um, I can't say that I, mm, I kind of like the texture more than the other low carb one, but they're both good options, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with regular pasta, it just kind of depends on 
what your goals are and what you're trying to cut out or add or whatever you're trying to do but this is actually pretty good it's it's not cheap so it's not something I would have all the time but it's a good option and I'm pretty pleased so far to end the day I'm having a brownie sundae I showed this in another what I eat in a day so I'm not really showing the assembly just in case you've already seen it but feels really really indulgent because you have the ice cream I'm gonna heat up the brownie put on the cool whip but it's still only about 150 calories this is my first time buying the Briars Delights, which is one of the newer locale ice creams. There's so many options now, and I've tried Briars, Kool-Aid, and Halo Top. I really like all three, and I think chocolate is the safest bet of all of them. But yeah, this is such, such a good dessert, and I have it when I'm really craving something indulgent, but it doesn't make me uh, feel guilty, even though it kind of tastes guilty, which is the best. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to let me know down below if you ever make anything inspired by what I make. That's like my favorite thing in the world. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!